So along the electron transport chain, we have many complexes. So as we discussed previously, in complex one of the electron transport chain, complex one essentially picks up the high energy electrons from NADH molecules and transfers those electrons onto a special carrier molecule known as ubiquinone. And when ubiquinone grabs those electrons, it is reduced into a ubiquinol form that is given by QH2. So this molecule is known as ubiquinol. Likewise, on complex two, the high energy electrons from FADH2 molecules are also transferred onto ubiquinone to reduce ubiquinone into ubiquinol. And the QH2, the ubiquinone, then travels onto complex three. And so in this lecture, I'd like to discuss the details of what happens when ubiquinol, the reduced form of ubiquinone, actually attaches onto complex three. Now, complex three goes by many names. So complex three is also known as Q-cytochrome C oxidoreductase, where the Q stands for ubiquinol. Or we also have cytochrome reductase. Both of these names refer to complex three. And complex three actually consists of many polypeptide chains. In fact, we have 11 polypeptide chains that make up complex three. Now, the entire function, the entire purpose of complex three is to actually transfer those high energy electrons from QH2 from ubiquinol onto another carrier molecule, another electron carrier used by the electron transport chain known as cytochrome C. And so in this lecture, we're going to discuss the details of how this transfer actually takes place. So, Let's begin by focusing on the three major components that you should be familiar with that we find on complex three. The first one that you should know is cytochrome C1, and this is not the same thing as cytochrome C. Even though they're both cytochrome molecules, and cytochrome molecules are proteins that contain heme groups that can bind and transfer electrons, cytochrome C and cytochrome C1 are not the same types of molecules. Now, cytochrome C1 actually contains a single heme group, but in the structure in complex three, we also have another cytochrome molecule known as cytochrome B, and this molecule actually contains two different heme groups that are capable of actually attaching electrons. And finally, we also have a structure known as the risky group, and this contains the 2-Fe2 sulfur group that can also bind electrons and transfer electrons onto different groups. So the entire process by which electrons are transferred from the ubiquinol onto the cytochrome C molecule is known as the Q cycle. And the Q cycle is actually composed of two major mini cycles. So we have the first mini cycle shown here, we also call the half cycle. And the second half cycle, the second mini cycle is known, is shown here. And together these two half cycles, these two mini cycles make up a single Q cycle. So the process by which electrons travel from the QH2, the ubiquinol that is produced on either complex one or complex two, the electron transport chain, onto another carrier molecule known as cytochrome C is known as the Q cycle. And by the way, cytochrome C is actually a water-soluble protein and it is attached onto the intermembrane space side of this complex three. So this is the matrix side, this is the inner membrane of the mitochondria, we have complex three, and this is the intermembrane space. And this protein carrier molecule, cytochrome C, when it actually attaches a single electron, when the oxidized version is reduced, the cytochrome C will actually detach itself, and because it's diffusible in water, it basically travels through the fluid and eventually attaches onto complex four, found on the intermembrane side of complex four, as we'll see in the next lecture. So let's begin by summarizing what takes place on the, in the first mini cycle, the first half cycle of the Q cycle. So we have ubiquinol attaches onto complex three, and when it attaches, the two protons, two H plus ions, are basically pumped, they're transported to the, to the um, intermembrane space of the mitochondria. 
and those two electrons follow two different pathways. Remember, we not only have two H plus ions attached to our ubiquinone, we also have two electrons. These two H plus ions are pumped to this side, but the two electrons follow two different pathways. One of those electrons follows this pathway, the other electron follows this pathway. So we have one electron being transferred onto the 2Fe2 sulfur groove found on the Risky center and then that, that same electron moves onto the heme group of cytochrome C1. Now, by the way, inside the heme group, so in the oxidized version of cytochrome C1, that, uh, that Fe atom basically exists in this form. But when it gains a single electron, so we have an electron coming in, when it gains a single electron, it is reduced into the Fe2 plus form. So remember, in the heme group, we have the iron atom that can actually gain that electron. And when it gains that electron, it is reduced. And so as the electron travels from the risky center to the cytochrome C1, it actually attaches onto the iron atom of the heme group, and so it is reduced. Now the electron travels from the heme group and ultimately ends up on the heme group of cytochrome C. And notice only a single electron can actually bind onto cytochrome C. So this is the major difference between cytochrome C electron carrier and the ubiquinone electron carrier. Ubiquinone is able to actually bind two electrons, but cytochrome C can only bind a single electron, and that's exactly why the second electron cannot follow this same pathway. It has to follow a different pathway. And by, and by following this different pathway, what we ultimately accomplish by the second electron pathway is is we're able to actually recycle that electron and use that electron in a future process as we'll see in more detail in just a moment. So once this electron binds onto the oxidized cytochrome C, it reduces that cytochrome C. The cytochrome C then detaches and diffuses within the fluid of the intermembrane space and travels and binds onto complex four. While the other electron, because it cannot go via this same pathway, it follows a different pathway, and that's where cytochrome B comes into play. Cytochrome B actually contains two different heme groups, and the electron first moves on to one heme group, then a second heme group, and then it ultimately ends up on two um, on um, ubiquinone. So this is basically the fully oxidized version of coenzyme Q, also known as ubiquinone. And when it gains that electron, it is basically partially reduced into a molecule we call the semiquinone radical ion, which contains a negative charge. And we'll see why we formed that in just a moment. So let's summarize the first half cycle of the Q cycle. So this Q cycle begins when the ubiquinol QH2 attaches onto complex three as shown here, and upon binding the two electrons, follow two different pathways, and the two protons are pumped into the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. Now, one of these electrons moves onto the risky center, the 2Fe2 sulfur group of the risky center, and then it is transferred onto the heme group of cytochrome C1, reducing the 3 plus form into the 2 plus form. From there, it is then picked up by the final except the cytochrome C. And when cytochrome C accepts that electron, it itself is reduced, and that uh, stimulates the detachment of the cytochrome C. It then is able to move along the fluid of the intermembrane space and attach onto complex four, as we'll see in the next lecture. Now, what about that other electron? Well, the second electron moves onto the heme groups of cytochrome B before actually being picked up by ubiquinone. Now, this ubiquinone is not the same one as this ubiquinone. So complex four, uh, complex three actually contains an additional ubiquinone that is attached onto a different site. And this ubiquinone is actually used to recycle this electron so that once the ubiquinone picks up that electron,
it is partially reduced into semi-quinone radical ion, which is given by this designation. So Q, a single electron, and that negative sign. Now, this is the first half cycle. Let's move on to the second half cycle. So next, this structure basically detaches and a second consecutive ubiquinol actually binds onto this location. And once this ubiquinol, a second different ubiquinol binds onto this complex three, the same type of pathway is basically followed by those two electrons and by the proton. So once the binding takes place in the second half cycle, the two protons are essentially transported into the intermembrane fluid of the mitochondria and the two electrons follow this same pathway. So that, this electron follows this pathway, binds onto the heme group, not the heme group, the 2Fe2 sulfur group, and then the electron moves on and binds onto the heme group of cytochrome C before actually being picked up by a second different cytochrome C molecule. So this cytochrome C molecule is different than this cytochrome C molecule. So this one basically detaches and an oxidized version, another one basically reattaches. And so we see that in a single Q cycle, we actually generate two reduced cytochrome C molecules because of the fact that a single, uh, a single ubiquinol can carry two electrons, but a single cytochrome C can only bind and carry a single electron. Now the other electron basically moves, attaches onto the heme groups of cytochrome C of, of cytochrome B, and then that electron is picked up by the semiquinone radical ion and now gains two electrons, and then it takes two protons from the matrix of the mitochondria, it picks up those two protons to form ubiquinol, and the ubiquinol detaches from complex three and enters the inner membrane of the mitochondria where now we can use this uh, this ubiquinol that is formed to attach it onto this complex and use that ubiquinol to basically generate those reduced cytochrome C molecules. So the entire point of this second pathway here is to basically use or recycle those electrons so that we can actually use those electrons in a useful way so that we don't lose the electrons and we can recycle and reuse them in this pathway to actually generate that reduced cytochrome C. So in the second half cycle of the Q cycle, the second QH transfers a second pair of electrons through the same pathways as before, except now at the end we form a ubiquinol because that semiquinone radical ion that is formed in the first half cycle picks up a second electron, is able to abstract two protons from the matrix of the mitochondria and form, regenerate that ubiquinol molecule and that ubiquinol can then be used by this pathway here to basically generate the reduced cytochrome C. So we conclude the following four important points, and I've only listed three. So the first important point is the following. The ubiquinone can actually carry two electrons, while the cytochrome C can only carry a single electron. And that's exactly why we need this second pathway here to basically recycle the electrons so that we can regenerate those ubiquinol molecules and reuse the ubiquinol molecules in this above pathway. So we need this bottom step. So we see that in a single Q cycle, two ubiquinol molecules are oxidized into ubiquinone, releasing four H plus ions to the intermembrane space. Two are released in this first process and two are released in this second process. At the same exact time, a single quinone or ubiquinone is reduced into ubiquinol and that allows us to recycle these electrons. So this is the recycling step of this process and we can imagine that this cytochrome B structure is actually a device that the complex uses to recycle those electrons so that we don't lose those electrons and we can reuse the electrons to produce even more reduced cyto cytochrome C molecules. 
Now, the two cytochrome C molecules, or two cytochrome C molecules are actually reduced in a single Q cycle. The first one is reduced as a result of the first half cycle, and the second one is produced reduced as a result of that second half cycle. And one thing that uh, one thing I didn't mention here is the fact that in the second half cycle, because we want to produce that ubiquinol, two protons are actually uptaken from the matrix of the mitochondria. And this additional uptake of protons helps us generate that gradient, the proton electrochemical gradient that will be used by ATP synthase to generate those ATP molecules.